So I don't think I ever formally introduced you to my little kitty cats. So this little monster is Midna. And she is a total love bug. Apart from at the vets where she hisses and growls and tries to kill everybody with her laser claws. Um, but uh, she is a little carrot top. We call her Midna because she has two different colours on her face. If you've ever played Twilight Princess, um, there's a character called Midna and she has two colours on her face. So she's like a little two-faced cat. But this is my little Midna. She is a very, very sweet little lady. I love her little raccoon tail too. And sleeping on top of a pile of clean laundry, which is actually still on the hanger, replete with pants and socks, is Frank the little brown tabby. Um, we always said that the first cat that we got when we first met each other would be called Frank. So, this is our little Frank. He is the greediest, noisiest cat ever. He will eat everything. <laughs> He looks a lot fatter than he is. He's just a sweet little thing. He's very cute. He's the one, he's the cute one. He's the one that's really popular at the vets because he doesn't hiss and he doesn't growl and he plays with everyone and everyone thinks he's the cutest. He's very sleepy. His default expression is confused. He always has his mouth slightly open like he's going, oh. He is a very cute little cat. And he's got a neck beard. Did I tell you about his neck beard? Hey everybody, so I only just uploaded my autumn beauty pics video. Um, but I kind of felt like I left a few blushes out. Um, I'm not one of those minimalist people who can basically ride off the back of those two blushes for the whole winter and be like, yeah, I only need those two, just, just to be all smug at you because I'm not like that. Here are some of the blushes that I might have liked to have included but didn't, basic, basically because I didn't want to talk your back legs off about blush, but everybody knows that blush is one of my favorite things. I have a problem with blush, it is one of my favourite things. We are like this, we are best buds, BFFs, and um, I feel the need to talk about some more blush in more detail. This is basically a parade of Illamasqua and pinks, and um, I can't really help that because it gets around to autumn winter time and I am compelled to use pink. The first blush that's in my current favourites list is this one by Illamasqua. This is Sub and it's a cream blusher and the first time I tried Illamasqua's cream blusher formulation I absolutely loathed it. I thought what is this? Is this a joke? This is kind of thin and greasy and not at all what I was expecting. When I saw this for a fiver at IMATS this year I was I yeah you can't you can't leave things like that. Can't leave a blush that cost a fiver. I didn't really have an opinion of it at the time but you know fiver blindness. So I tend to pick this up around autumn winter time because my skin is a bit drier and that's the time of year that I can actually wear it. Forget about summer if you've got oily skin with these because these are quite emollient, very creamy and they might just slide off your face. The thing about Illamasqua blushes is that they are actually really really good but it took me a bit of kind of cajoling to find out how, how I like to use this. But they're very interesting in the fact that they are quite thin and quite greasy but what they do do is meld seamlessly with the skin and they give you this lovely kind of ghost of a colour. They almost leave like an imprint of colour but they don't leave any of the sticky texture or the thickness that you get with other cream brushes like those ones from MAC. So this is a beautiful baby pink, it's a, a bluish baby pink and 
I love this because it's not even that pigmented but when I blend it over the skin because of the emollient nature of the product it spreads quite far and it leaves this kind of ghost of a colour a really beautiful natural flush it really just melds with the texture of the skin doesn't stick to dryness and it's just a lovely product. I tend to use these with my Illamasqua highlighting brush. I'm gonna let you finish, but Illamasqua highlighting brush is the best highlighting brush of all time. So I just find that it blends them seamlessly and they just really diffuse over the skin. They give this extra glow as well. They have a sheen to them because of their because they've got so much slip in the texture. They have this beautiful sheen, which I could really do with when my skin is really, really dry and flat in winter. Next, I have a limited edition blush to show you, unfortunately. Please don't hate me. This is the Briar Rose Beauty Powder from the Disney Villains Collection. And I need to mention it because I love it so much. Obnoxious love face. This is a violet toned pink. Again, I really like to stick to my blue toned pinks during autumn and winter. I just feel like they flatter my complexion. This isn't that pigmented. It's not the most pigmented of blushes. But what it does do is give me this beautiful kind of bluey pink flush. This is that kind of deepness that I love in autumn and winter because... I usually, usually I spend the whole year doing light colours and da 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 and in winter it's a bit more of an excuse to play because the light's dimmer and if you make a mistake no one's gonna see, it's fine. I love this violet tone pink, it's just really really beautiful. Um, it's like Azania Blossom from MAC but it's a bit darker, a bit deeper and a bit kind of more juicy. The next one I have to show you is from Illa Masqua as well. This is one of their first forays into shimmer blushes. This is the powder blush in Morale and this came out with their Theatre of the Nameless collection and it's this stunning obnoxiously bright fuchsia. This actually reminds me of a MAC lipstick and the lipstick is called Violetta. When I swatch it it has this like this sheen to it which almost it leans blue. It's a very purpley one again, very blue toned and I love this. It's really really pigmented and very soft however so I have to be quite careful with this blush in winter obviously otherwise I look terrifying but then aforementioned decrease in light kind of mitigates that effect. So I love this because it gives me that kind of just in from the cold cheeks. This was in my autumn picks of 2011 I think. Um, and I still love it now. I feel like I don't have the excuse to get it out except for autumn and winter when it really just goes with the season but the rest of the year it just stays waiting for its chance to shine in my blush box. This has beautiful gold shimmer in it. It's just a lovely colour. It's one of those colours which you probably wouldn't pick up actually and then suddenly you realise that you love it. Next I'm going to move on to something slightly more neutral toned. So I'm, I've am i been obsessed with this blush all month actually. You know, I think I only just featured it in my Get Ready With Me video with the Armani Maestro Fusion Foundation. And this is Tarte Exposed. And this is for when I have... Sometimes I really don't feel like a pink and in autumn and winter I tend to go for heavier eye makeup. I am not scared of eyeshadow anymore. In summer I just spent the whole summer just wearing mascara and that was it. I just didn't want to know anything to do with eyeshadow really at all. But um, now that it's come to the time when I am obsessed with eyeshadow again and eyeliner and everything that goes on my eyes... Um, I use this. This is one of those nothingy blushes. It's this kind of tawny peach neutral. It's very brown toned and it doesn't really do anything. In the pan it's just kind of like eh. Uh, it's not really like squee. It's, it's not really any opinion at all but it's kind of like scaffolding for your face I found that when I use really dark eye makeup or a lot more eye makeup than usual this will go with anything. It's not really detracting from your eye makeup but it sculpts your face and makes it look better than it is but it's not really there but it is kind of there. Ooh, mystery. I really really love this. I never expected to love it as much as I do love it but it's just a fantastic colour to use when you're going for more dark eye makeup. It's a bit of a grafter. So the last blush I have is from Illamasqua's most recent collection and this is Sophie. And this is a bit of a kind of wild card but I've been obsessed with this since September and it shows no signs of waning so I really need to show you it. Um, this is 
what I had my eye on when they announced their new collection and this is a beautiful bright coral shot through with gold sparkles and the reason I like it is because it's I don't think it's typically summer for me I think it leans quite warm and quite rusty and the gold shimmer is very very pretty as well so for me I don't think this is a typical summer blush um, and indeed it came up with their autumn collection. It's very pigmented, it's very brightening and when I want to cut through all of the saccharine sweet pinks in my current rotation then this is the thing I pick because it's just really brightening, kind of zhuzhes up your face, it's kind of really zingy and fresh and I just absolutely adore it. I'm absolutely covered in blush now. It's been one of my absolute favourite blushes of late. I just love the way that it brightens up my face. That is all of my current favourite blushes and because the last time I did this type of video I did a bit of a dance, I feel like I owe you that this time. So for those of you who don't enjoy fun, um, you can click out now. For those of you who are actually going to go ahead and watch this and suffer my second-hand embarrassment, feel free. For what you're about to watch, I can only apologise. Um, have a lovely day, everybody, and see you soon. Yeah.